All right, Rick, stay right there. We want to bring in the rest of our panel. Joe Lavornia joins us on set. He's a former economic advisor in the Trump administration and national economic chief economist. He's now SNBC Nico Securities America chief economist. Dana Peterson, who is chief economist with the conference board. Jason Trennert, who is Strategus Research Partners chairman and CEO, and Steve Leisman. And Steve, why don't you just walk me through, first of all, and tell me what this means from the Fed's perspective. Does this make it more likely, or at least take the pressure off them, to, to raise at this next meeting next week? You think they'll have the ability to sit back and say, we're going to take a pause because inflation's not hotter than expected and we are concerned about what's happening in the, in the financial system? I think what the Fed's going to do is roll back Rick Santelli's reporting on the prior two inflation reports, both of which were hotter than expected. And they're going to look and see a nice, calm Rick Santelli today when they see it, and they're going to say, well, at least it wasn't worse than expected. They have a, a lot of work to do here. They've still got an inflation problem. Um, but I think they'll feel like they have at least some wiggle room in that it was not worse than expected. There's one thing I'm a little, I guess, concerned about here. We'll see what to do with that. But I want to double check my number here. I do see that used cars and trucks, the prices were actually down 2.8%. And there's no other way to follow this uh, issue here than listen to Phil LeBeau, who says those, that, that number is rising. So I'm a little concerned that this number did not pick up what's really happening in the economy. Sometimes that happens with a lag with the CPI number. I also noticed, Becky, that your shelter costs, um, OER, is still at 0.7%. It's a very important expectation at the Fed that this number comes down. It's about a third of, of the CPI, um, and, and it will hopefully come down, and that will be a big part of why the Fed can relax a little bit. I think this number, Becky, just to sum up, because it is not worse than expected, the Fed has the latitude or flexibility to pause if it feels it needs to because of the financial conditions. All right, we'll come back to shelter in just a moment, but Joe, let's talk about what you think the Fed should do here. They should definitely pause when you have a crisis like this, and you could just see just on, based on market price action how much the two-year notes moved, biggest since 87, how much front-end spreads have moved, biggest since the Greek crisis. The Fed's either eased shortly thereafter or they've paused. In this case, they could pause. They could stop the QT because the QT is draining the bank reserves at a 10, 11 percent rate. That's because right now what's happening is these smaller, medium-sized banks are scrambling for deposits. Wait. See how things evolve. You've got the new forecast. You can still highlight the fact they need to do more. They'll likely need to do more. But just wait. Go five weeks. See what happens. You can reevaluate in May. Dana, how about you? I think it, it, there definitely is a possibility that the Fed will pause next week. This is a crisis in the banking sector, and certainly the Fed doesn't want to do anything to exacerbate it. But I think that even if the Fed does <coughs> pause next week, they should send a very strong signal that it's not done, that there still needs to be further interest rate hikes to tackle inflation. Inflation is sticky, and it's not coming down as fast as what would be expected. Jason, if that is what the Fed actually does, and, and Steve Leeson has been telling us that that could be what they do, that they could take a page from what we saw in Europe last, uh, last time around where they stopped and then came right back on the Bank of England. Um, if that's the message, as an investor, what do you do? Um, as somebody who's actually putting money to work, is that a sign for risk on again? Uh, not for very long. I think I would view it as kind of the pause that refreshes, and I would, I would get, use it as an opportunity to probably de-risk the portfolio, because I agree with the other guests, and I agree with Steve and Rick. Um, I, I think that there's a decent chance they pause tomorrow, uh, but we're a long way away from the Fed's target. Um, and I also think the Fed is also, we have to remember, is playing a political game here uh, because we're heading into an election year next year. And I, I don't think they want to have their fingerprints over another, uh, another bank failure. So um, there's a lot of things that are coming into play here. And it seems to me that uh, as an investor, you want to de-risk the portfolios because we are getting to the point at which the, the Fed tightenings are breaking things, as they always do. Uh, and it will be hard, it seems to me, to avoid a recession given the amount of tightening that's been in the system. But it probably, uh, discretion is part of probably the better part of value here for the Fed, and they should probably take, take a little bit of a breather.